in their way, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for them and to remove these difficulties and to allow them to fulfill the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the performing of Jum'ah. My dear respected brothers and elders, mothers and sisters, many a times we don't realize the value of what we have. And sometimes we think of ourselves as insignificant. But what we need to realize and understand is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored every single one of us. Allah has favored each and every one of us. And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored us, He has honored us with Islam. He has honored us with Iman. And this is a great bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if not the greatest bounty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. How can we be depressed? How can we be sad when we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this greatest gift? The gift of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And we need to speak about this value of faith now and again because why as human beings sometimes we feel insignificant we feel degraded we feel that we are worth nothing but in reality Allah has given us the greatest ni'mah and that is the gift of faith that is the gift of la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and only when we leave this world will we realize the value of Iman, the value of this faith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. We all know that on the day of Qiyamah, the only religion that will be accepted will be Islam. Allah ta'ala says, Allah 
says, whoever seeks other than Islam, it will not be accepted from them. وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And in the hereafter, they will be amongst the losers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Ibrahim, He mentions and speaks about the value of this Iman. And Allah describes our Iman as a tree. And the intention of this khutbah is to rewind and speak about some of the virtues of this gift of Iman with the intention of appreciating what we have so that we can leave this masjid with our Iman strong again, with our intention firm and clean for that one purpose of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the purpose of this khutbah inshaAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ibrahim, أَلَمْ تَرَ كَيْفَ ضَرَبَ اللَّهِ مَثَلًا كَلِمَةً طَيْبًا كَشَجَرَةٍ طَيْبَةٍ أَصْلُهَا ثَابِتٌ وَفَرْعُهَا فِي السَّمَاءِ تُؤْتِي أُكُلَهَا كُلَّ حِينٍ بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهَا وَيَضْرِبُ اللَّهُ الْأَمْثَالَ لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Allah says, do you not see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken the example, a parable of a majestic phrase, such a valuable word, a phrase, kalimatan tayyibah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse speaks about the kalimatan tayyibah, He is referring to tabaraka wa ta'ala afdalu dhikr, the greatest form of dhikr, which is la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this seed of iman that is embedded in each and every one of us, that is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That is what we call the seed of Iman. What is it called? The seed of Iman. And that seed of Iman is planted in each and every one of us. Allah says, Kashajara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defines our Iman, our faith like a tree. And Allah Ta'ala says that this tree of Iman, Asluha Thabit. Its roots are firm in the ground, meaning that a person, when we plant a seed, and then that seed turns, it germinates, it, it has stems, and from a stem, it becomes a very strong, solid tree. A person's Iman should be firm, not 50-50. Should not be 50-50 or 30-100, no. A person's Iman, his Iman in Allah should be 100%. A person may have a weak Iman, but if someone were to tell you, give up your faith, even the biggest sinner on this dunya, if you were to tell that person, renounce your faith, he will say never. He may not pray Salah, he may be doing the worst of sins, but if you were to ask him, brother or sister, renounce your faith, he will say never. Why? Because his Iman is firm like the tree, that massive gum tree that is so firm into the ground. Allah Ta'ala then says regarding the tree of Iman, The tree of Iman, its branches are high, tall, towering over everything. The tree of Iman, it bears fruits all the time with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we look at the, the fruit of this world, we all love fruit. Huh? Everyone loves fruit. You talk about watermelon, mango, we start drooling. Right? We love fruit. So the tree of this world, if you are to plant the tree, how many times can you benefit from that tree? How many times? Once, maximum twice, sometimes you get nothing. Say, oh, you know, this garden, just wasting water, not receiving any fruit, we get upset. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
the tree of Iman, it bears fruits all the time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this example in the Quran. The tree of Iman, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to ponder over this example. Now we're going to speak about this example. We are going to speak about this example that Allah ta'ala has brought to our intention. To make us realize the value of our faith. Our connection with Allah wa ta'ala. Now with every fruit tree, there are fruits. So we are going to speak about some of the most delicious, sweet, outstanding fruit on this tree that Allah wa ta'ala speaks about in Surah Ibrahim. Without a doubt, one of the most sweetest fruits on the tree of Iman is that only a person who has Iman will enter paradise. Allah ta'ala says in Surah Al-Kahf, Allah says, Verily, those who have Iman and they do righteous deeds. For them is Jannatul Firdaus. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. May Allah make us of those people who will be honored and given the privilege of being part of those people who will be given that distinction in Jannatul Firdaus. Say Amin, brothers. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Yakhruju min al nar. A group of people will be taken out of the fire of Jahannam and they will have iman the size of a coin. Another group of people will be taken out of the fire of Jahannam and they will have Iman the size of an ant. Another group of people will be taken out of the fire of Jahannam and they will have Iman the size of a mustard seed. And then Adana Adana until the, the smallest portion of Iman. Anyone who possessed any form of Iman, whether it be equivalent to the size of an atom, will be removed from the fire of Jahannam. And Jahannam will be free from anyone who had any form of Iman within their hearts. This is without a doubt one of the most sweetest fruits of Iman. Is that Jannah is only prepared for the people of Iman. Of the fruits and blessings of Iman, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide us because of our iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Verily those who have iman and they do righteous deeds, Allah will guide them. Why? Because of their iman. Allah will guide us. This is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah will guide us because we have Iman in Allah wa ta'ala. Every day we seek guidance from Allah. Ihdina, ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Ya Allah, guide us to the straight path. The Prophet of Allah, he, he taught us a dua that we must recite every day. Allahumma inna nas'alukal huda. Oh Allah, we ask you for guidance. And because of our Iman, Allah promises that He will guide us. Ameen, inshaAllah. So this is the second fruit and blessing of Iman. Of the fruits and blessings of Iman, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect us. We will come under the wilaya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ala inna awliya Allah. Allah says, Behold the friends of Allah. There is no fear upon them and there is no grief. Who are these people? They are the people of Iman and they feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala says in another verse, Allah is a protector for those who have Iman. Do not harm someone who has Iman. Do not harm a person who performs Salatul Fajr in the masjid. 
Why? Because you are interfering with the protection of Allah, the insurance of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Man salla salat al-subh fahuwa fi dhimmatillah. The one who performs salat al-fajr, he comes or she comes under the protection of Allah. And wallahi, there is no better and stronger protection than the protection, the assurance, insurance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also mentions, hadith comes in Muslim, Man aada li waliyan, faqad aadantuhu bil harb. Whoever causes animosity with my wali, with the one who has a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the friend of Allah, you are waging war against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is of the fruits and blessings of Iman. Of the fruits and blessings of Iman, my dear brothers and elders, because we have Iman, whether we are afflicted by hardship, <clears throat> or whether we experience a bounty from Allah, because we have Iman, in both instances, we are the winners. Only because we have Iman. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, hadith comes in Muslim, Ajaban li amril mu'min. Very amazing are the matters of a believer. Inna amarahu kullahu lahu khayr. Every matter relating to a believer, there is only goodness therein. وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ This is only in the case of a believer. إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَرَّا When a believer is afflicted by a bounty, shakara, he is grateful to Allah. وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّا When a believer is afflicted by hardship, by a calamity, a bad calamity, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, صَبَرَ Be patient. فَكَانَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ Because we have Iman, when we go through hardship, it is not punishment. It is a ni'mah in disguise. It is a bounty in disguise. Why? Because the more hardship we go through, the more sins Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is removing from our slate. The more hardship we go through, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is elevating our status in Jannah. <coughs> the more hardship we go through, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards us for that hardship. The more difficult the situation, the greater the reward by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ Allah will reward the one who perseveres a reward without any accountability, subhanAllah. Meaning the reward that Allah will grant you because of your hardship is a reward beyond our imagination and our understanding. So never take hardship. We never ask for hardship. We never make dua for hardship. But if it is to come our way, we accept it and place our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a result, we will be rewarded by Allah. There is no religion that rewards a believer, a person, for his hardship other than Islam. And this is why it is one of the fruits and blessings of Iman. Of the fruits and blessings of Iman is whether we commit sin equivalent to the sea, whether we commit sin equivalent to the heavens and the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us hope. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is willing to forgive us for as long as we don't associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has given us the fruit of tawbah. Allah has given us the fruit of istighfar to clean our sins. Hadith comes in Ibn Majah, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, At-ta'ibu Habibullah, the one who seeks forgiveness for his sins is loved by Allah. وَالتَّائِبُوا مِنَ الذَّنْبِ كَمَنْ لَا ذَنْبَلَ The one who seeks forgiveness for his sins is like a person who has not even committed the sin, subhanAllah. This is the mercy of Allah. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ya abana Adam, O son of Adam, if you come to me with sin that will fill between the heavens and the earth, I am prepared to forgive you. Ya Abna Adam, if you come to me with sin equivalent to the foam on the ocean, I am still prepared to forgive you for as long as you do not commit shirk. For as long as you do not associate partners with me. Wallahi, this is a ni'mah from Allah. Why? This is through the blessings, the fruits and blessings of Iman. Of the fruits and blessings of Iman is that when we die, 
when we are passing away, when we are in sakarat, and Malakul Maut takes our ruh, Allah Ta'ala grants the believers glad tidings of paradise, Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran. Allah says, Verily, those who say Allah is my Rabb, this is Iman, La ilaha illallah. Thumma staqamu. Then they are steadfast on this statement. It is very important that when we have Iman, we must be steadfast on Iman. And this is a dua that we must make to Allah that, Ya Allah, keep me steadfast on Iman. Allahumma thabbitna ala al Iman. Oh Allah, establish me and us on Iman, on faith. At the time of death, the angels will come in large amounts and they will give the believer glad tidings. Allah takhafu, do not be scared. Wala tahzanu, don't be sad. Wa abshiru bil jannati lati kuntum tu'adun. Subhanallah. The malaika will give the believer at the time of death glad tidings of paradise of that which has been promised to them. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. This is of the fruits and blessings of Iman. Of the fruits and blessings of Iman, my dear brothers and elders, mothers and sisters. What will be that light? What will be that light on the day of Qiyamah that will allow us to see where our paradise is? It will be our Iman. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, يَوْمَ تَرَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَسْعَى نُورُهُمْ بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَبِأَيْمَانِهِمْ بُشْرَاكُمُ الْيَوْمِ Allah says on the day of Qiyamah, you will see the believing men and women, lights in front of them and on their sides. What will that light be, my dear brothers and sisters? Wallahi, that light will be your Iman. And the stronger your Iman, the stronger that light will be, the stronger that Noor will be. And that is why the Munafiqeen, the Munafiqeen, the hypocrites, Inna al Munafiqeen yukhadi'oon Allah wa huwa khadi'oohum. Inna al Munafiqeen fi al-dark al-asfal min al-nar. The Munafiqeen, the hypocrites, they will be on the lowest platform of Jahannam. May Allah protect us. The Munafiqeen will have no light on the day of Qiyam. No light. And with no light, you cannot see. There is no guidance which will cause the munafiqeen to fall into the pitfall of the fire of Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. <coughs> My dear respected brothers and elders, we can speak the whole night. We have just mentioned a few fruits of Iman. Why? To make us realize how fortunate are we as Muslims. We may not have wealth. We may not have status. But we have something greater than that. We have Allah. We have Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We have Islam. And wallahi my dear brothers and sisters, if we are searching for happiness in material, in having a good job, in driving a fancy car, in having status in this world, by Allah, you will never find it. You will never ever find it. The only place where you will find happiness is in having a connection with Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. By appreciating La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And do you know what is the sweetest fruit of Iman? What is of all these fruits and blessings of Iman that we have mentioned? Do you know what is the sweetest fruit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the believers? It is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُ الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادَةً Allah ta'ala says for the believers, we have granted them the husna, which in this verse, it refers to Jannah, وَزِيَادَةً and more. What is this ziyada? What is this more that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about? 
The scholars of tafsir mention this ziyadah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about in the Quran. This is the greatest fruit and blessing of Iman on the day of Qiyamah for the people of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, those people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with, they will be given the privilege and honor to see Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah. Takbir. Wujuhu yawma idhin nadirah ila rabbiha nadirah. On the day of Qiyamah, the believers will be given that privilege to see Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And this is the greatest fruit and blessing of Iman. Imagine that creator that loves us so much, that creator that has done so much good for us. We commit so much sin, but Allah still gives us meals to eat. We do so much wrong. We delay our prayers. We do so much wrong. But still Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala gives us everything. Is this not true? We break so many laws, but Allah is so loving. Allah is so kind and compassionate, subhanAllah, that Allah still showers His Rahmah upon us. May Allah forgive us and may Allah shower His Rahmah upon us. In conclusion, I leave you all with a very important message. This tree of Iman, it requires nourishment. If you don't water a tree, if that tree does not receive enough sunlight, what will happen? It will die. True. If you don't look after the tree, you don't trim it, you don't look after it, that tree will die. So we need to look after the tree. So how do we look after the tree of Iman? We look after the tree of Iman by watering this tree with A'mal al We look after this tree of Iman with washing it, with pouring it full of amal, good deeds. Because Iman is not complete without good deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, when he addresses Iman, it is always followed up by amal al-salihah. Inna al-ladheena amanu wa amilu al-salihat. Allah says, verily those who have Iman and they do righteous deeds. وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Allah promises those who have Iman and do righteous deeds. And do righteous deeds. So to maintain this Iman, to protect this Iman, to acknowledge this Iman, we must do good deeds. The dhikr of Allah, Quran, coming to the masjid, having a relationship, being kind with others, helping the needy, giving sadaqah, smiling, any form of good deed, subhanallah. This is how we are going to maintain and appreciate this gift of Iman. Allahumma thabbitna ala al-Iman. Wa amitna ala al-Iman. Wa ahshurna yawm al-Qiyamati ma'a al-Iman. Oh Allah, establish us firm on Iman. Oh Allah, allow us to die a husnul khatima, a good ending with Iman, off our tongues and within our hearts. وَحْشُرْنَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ مَعَ الْإِيمَانِ And Ya Allah, through your infinite mercy and karam, resurrect us on the day of Qiyamah مَعَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا ذلك الفضل من الله وكفى بالله عليما سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك